What's up, Clarity Coders? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to benchmark every version of Python from 2.7 all the way to 3.11 using the same Python file. Now, I know what you're thinking. This eliminates some of the benefits of the new versions, but it's very true to how Python programmers write code. I'll have the chapters in the description as well if you want to skip to the results. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. We're going to create a new file. I'm just going to call it speed.py. And then we're going to do some imports of libraries I know we're going to use and that are safe across different versions of Python here. So we're going to use time, OS, CSV, and the random library in our program. We're also going to create a directory to hold fake files when we create them. And I'm just going to call it fake files. Let's do a quick check here to make sure that folder exists, which it doesn't yet. And if it doesn't, we'll create the folder. So we'll use make dirs and then pass in our directory. If we run this, you'll see that it creates it. And then if we run it again, it doesn't have an error or anything like that. Now let's create some functions for stuff we're gonna test. The first one we're gonna call def multiples. You're gonna pass in a number and another and a second number, and then how many numbers you want to iterate through and test. And then we're gonna say for i in range of one to the max plus one. We're going to check to see if it's a multiple of one of these numbers by using modular division. So if it has a remainder of zero by num one, or if it has a remainder of zero by num two, then normally we would do something here. We're just trying to simulate some time being passed. So we'll pass for right now. Let's define another function here. So we'll call it create files and we'll pass in the number of files that we want to create and the file path. And we'll say for i in range to the number of files we want to create. Then we'll do with open. We can use our path that we had before. And we're going to use path.join. We're going to pass in our file path. We're going to name the file just with whatever i is at the moment. And then we'll end with a .txt extension. So it's just a text file we're creating. And then as FP. And then here we can actually write a line to the file just to simulate, again, creating a file in each version to see which is the fastest. And now let's create a function to do some different things with lists. But the majority of the time is going to be spent sorting it. So let's call it sort underscore list and pass in N for how many numbers we want to use in our list. We can call it test list and it can just be a blank list. We'll say for i in range n. And then inside here, we can do some different things. For our test list, let's append a random number. So we'll do random.random. .random. And then afterwards, let's sort that list just using the built-in sort method, which we can use clear back to Python 2.7, which we're going to test. Now we have our functions created. Let's go ahead and set up our testing structure. So we'll say the version of our program that we want to test. In this case, let's see what version I'm using just natively here. I'm using 3.8.10, so we'll test that. Now I'm gonna have results from Python 3.11 all the way down to 3. Point, or from 2.7. We're gonna create a blank list to hold our data, and then we'll create a variable to keep track of the total start time. Now I'm gonna loop through these functions say 100 times to test so we don't, so we eliminate any inconsistencies here. So we'll say for i in range, this is how many times you wanna loop through our tests. We can do 10 for right now because 100 will take a bit of time. And my results will be from 100 even though I'm showing you 10 here. First thing we're gonna do is find multiples. So I'm gonna use a start time variable each time so we know when that process was started. And then I'm going to use multiples here and we'll call it with the multiples we wanna use, which are three and five. And then however many numbers we want to test, I think 10 million would probably be a good amount. So we'll try that. And then let's create a variable to hold that result time. So each time we loop through, it's going to keep track of how many milliseconds this took. 
So we're gonna get time and then minus our start time and then we're going to times it by a thousand and that should give us the milliseconds it took. And we're going to create some files. So we're gonna hold the same structure. We're gonna give a start time for when we started creating files. So we'll get that. And then we'll call our create file function that we used from above. We'll say how many we wanna create and the path we want to use. And then we'll get our time, which is going to be the same little chunk of code from above. So we'll copy pasta that. Now we wanna delete those files that we created. Now we forgot to create this function, so we'll have to go back and do that. But let's get the structure set up since we're here. We're gonna use our start time just like we did before. We're gonna call our delete function, which again doesn't exist, but we should just need to pass it the directory that we want to delete from, which is the fake files that we have in the dir variable. And then let's get the time it takes to delete the files. Copy pasta. And now this function should be relatively easy to write. Let's slide up here and we can write that function. So we'll do def delete underscore files. We'll pass in the file path that we want to delete. And then we can say for i in range, nope for i in os.listdir, then the file path, os.remove, and then we'll pass in the path that we wanna remove. So we'll do os.path.join. Here we wanna pass in the file path and then the actual file that we want to remove. All right, now we can continue our test down here. The last one that we want to do is sort our lists. Sort lists. We'll do our same structure, start time, time dot time. Sort underscore list. And then we'll pass in how many random numbers we wanna to add to our list. A million seems fitting. We'll do time underscore sort. And then we can copy pasta our same snippet from above. Now let's create our CSV for this version. So we're gonna append our data. Notice we're still inside of the for loop right now. And inside of there, we're gonna pass in a list with the times multiples, the time sort, the time create, and the time delete. Then finally, outside of the for loop, we can calculate our total time the program took, we're not going to do milliseconds for this because it actually takes quite a bit of time, so we'll leave it in seconds. And then we'll create our CSV for this version. We'll pass in our version. I'm trying to make this safe for Python 2 as well, which I'm not very familiar with, so bear with me. I'm gonna do some string concatenation and I'm gonna concatenate the version, a dash, and then the total time. And then we also need to concatenate the extension, which is a CSV. And then we'll write that file. We can do it as F just for file. And then we'll do write equals CSV.writer F. Write dot write rows and we can pass in our data. Now when we run this, we should get a CSV. The CSV will have blank lines in between them. You can eliminate the new lines with a attribute, but it won't run in Python too, so I've left that out. So that's essentially how you write the code. We're gonna get a CSV here that we'll take a look at. If you wanna do the following tests, I just ran it with this and then ran it with each version of Python. So now let's skip to the results and take a look at what we came up with while we were testing the different versions. All right, so this is data compiled from 100 runs on each version of Python. The first chart we're looking at here is finding the multiples of three or five, which was originally a project Euler challenge. 
So Project Euler was like leak code before leak code for us old people that you kids have probably never seen. But you can see here that Python 11 does win this, but it showcases something that I find really interesting and that's that Python 2.7 beats everything else out of the gate. You know, we're using for loops and different things like that, not list comprehension, but just out of the box, how most people write Python programs, 2.7 is the fastest other than 3.11 at this task. We look at sorting 1 million records. This is a little more what I expected, I guess. Uh, 2.7 is pretty slow and then Python 3.11 is the fastest by far here so that built-in function sort function has clearly gotten a lot better in the newer versions of Python Then we got creating a thousand files now in the comments let me know why okay so the 2.7 version actually creates a thousand files faster than 3.11. So remember, we're creating a thousand files and writing one line of text in each of them, saving that file on the hard drive and then moving on. And it was consistently faster than everything else. Although it looks like Python 3.11 is the fastest out of the out of Python 3. Then if we look at deleting, same thing. Python 2 beats everything else at deleting those 1,000 files. So in our program, we create 1,000 files and then we turn around and we delete those same 1,000 files. And again, Python 2.7 is the fastest and Python 11 is actually slower than Python 3.2 as well, but that's pretty minuscule difference. That could be just some, some minor issue there or something like that, but overall, 2.7 wins this as well. This is the total time of executing the 100 iterations of our benchmark. And you can see that Python 11 does win that. And again, Python 2.7 is in second place. And here we have some, the each individual kind of thrown out here on a chart. Yes, you could have shown this in Python as well. I know you guys will probably rip me for using Excel, but it was already in a CSV, so it was quick dirty, easy. So that's the route I went. Let me know in the comments what you think of this benchmark, if it's trash or if it's very telling. If you have any video suggestions, please let me know as well. I read them all. I try to respond to most of them. And until next time, keep coding.